Think about the following situation before we start this video. There's a 16-year-old and a 30-year-old man chatting with each other on some random chat app, whether it be WhatsApp, Discord, or Twitter. The entire time, this 30-year-old man is being very sensual and weird, but constantly stressing the fact that he will never do anything sexual until this person's over 18. Yet, most of the time they talk, it ends up devolving into some sort of partially sexual and incredibly provocative role play or the like. This guy is not innocent, right? Like, this guy committed textbook grooming. This is not okay. Well, this is the exact type of story I'm going to be covering today. What I'm going to show you today is going to lend a lot of credence to my past two videos, if they even needed any more. And I'm sorry to keep harking on about the furry fandom, but I oftentimes make videos as they come to my mind, and oftentimes as they come to me from other people as well. And of course, by the nature of these videos where I'm exposing pedophiles, they come to me from a victim. And it took me quite a while to get in touch with this person, but thankfully they were willing to share their story about how between the ages of 16 and 17, and even to when they were 18, this 33-year-old man who is a popular YouTuber in the furry fandom, as well as on Twitch, has continuously groomed them into a relationship when they were over the age of 18. And although that may sound like, oh, well, at least he's waiting until he's 18, this is different than just saying, I don't want to be serious with you until you're 18, just to be 100% sure that you're ready. This is, I don't want to do anything with you until you're 18 because I'm scared for myself. The person in question today is Cherim, or Karim, I have no idea. He has a YouTube channel with 28,000 subscribers, a Twitch channel with 4,000 subscribers, and is an active member of the Furries on Twitch community. Just to preface, they didn't know about this, this is not their fault. But he actively receives over 50 viewers a stream on average, which is incredibly high. This guy's YouTube channel also featured many Roblox games, primarily being the transfer game things that are totally fetish games and are actually mostly owned by pedophiles, it seems like. So that kind of gives you a clue into the kind of stuff he makes on his YouTube. Before I really show you all that, I want to really get into what he did with the victim that I'm going to be showing you in the chat logs because that I feel should be presented first and then we can talk about the other things that he's done. So starting off with the chat logs, you see a pretty standard introduction and this goes all the way back to November of 2018. This is how long this has been going on for. So the person in questionnaire whose name and avatar have obviously been changed says, Hey Cherim, I was wondering if it was okay if I could draw you for practice, and then Cherim says, oh sure, and then they exchange a little bit, and then the victim ends up drawing the character. And notice how this actually has quite a large stomach area, and that kind of gives you another clue into Cherim's various interests. And again, he goes on, you did a good job, tubby puppo. From here, they don't talk super often until about the beginning of 2019, specifically in February, where this relationship kind of takes an upward turn. By this point, the victim had actually shared their face with Cherim, and Cherim thought it would be a brilliant idea to commission an artwork with both himself and the person featured being transformed into furries. Oh yeah, and by the way, Cherim says he is the one doing the transferring in this case. This is not non-sexual, this is fetish art with a 33-year-old man, who was I think actually 30 at the time, and a 16-year-old being featured in fetish artwork. Without their consent, by the way. As you can see, the victim says, that kind of shocked me though, wasn't expecting an IRL me. Then Cherim says, oh, well, it was a transfer of you, human, into a lovely, wonderful wolf you are now. I didn't share your photos, I know you were sensitive about that, so I didn't share those, I just described you. Again, let me put this into perspective. Imagine if you were a young or middle teenager and some 30-year-old man had paid someone else to both star you and himself in a fetish drawing. That would be a little fucking weird, wouldn't it? That is not okay at all. Yet it happened here. About a week later or so, we get into a very odd roleplay between these two. And keep in mind, for some reason, Cherim is an incredibly manipulative person and he wholeheartedly believes that Vor, being the consumption of someone else's character, literal consumption, is non-sexual. When 90% of even the furry community will say it is 100% sexual and very weird. Yet, Cherim decides to go through with this and starts role-playing with the victim in a very, very sexual way. Saying, one of the many tantalizing options and possibilities with such a cute, their fursona like you. He responds cryptically, daring to give a slurp to your butt on the next pass around it, even nibbling lightly at your fire tail. A doggo like me has too many options and I'm a bit too submissive to know what to choose. Why do you ask? Do you wish to be a meal? Bro, 
This is a 30-year-old man talking to a 16-year-old. This is not okay. And the thing is, is that I guarantee you, when Charon finds out about this, he's gonna be like, well, it was just simply non-sexual and the kid was totally into it. You have to understand, this is not a big deal. Dude, this is sexual. Everything that's going on here is sexual. Even if it's not wholly explicit, it is sexual. And I know for a fact you're going to try and wiggle your ass out of this, but I am doing my absolute hardest to make sure that that will not happen. So then the victim replies. He perks up as you got near his rump. Hey! He blushed slightly, then jumped as you began nimbly at his tail. Ah, Cherum, you gotta be careful around a, this person's fursona's tail. And then he says, oh, sorry, I'll go back to the butt then. He relents and obeys, leaving your poor tail again after giving its underside a little bump with his cold, wet nose, instead doing exactly as he said and lapping playfully against your butt as an alternative. About a month later, he said something pretty odd in response to something the victim said, where they said, also, do I act really silly around you? With Cherim responding, you do, but I think it's cute, adorable. I feel like a big old father figure or something. A hungry father figure, but a father figure all the same. Again, do you really think that's appropriate to, for a 30-year-old man to be saying to a 16-year-old? A couple days later, they were discussing some sort of roleplay scenario where Cherim says, I'd enjoy you as a human or this person's persona in either situation. Well, do you like my tush? With the victim responding no, and then in in a spoiler saying, sorry, I meant to say yes, but I felt too shy to say it. And then Sharon says, then I want you up my butt. You just need to tell me what form of you should go in there. A couple months later, we see just how deep into the Vore quote-unquote community that Cherim is, sending by far one of the most vile pieces of Vor art I've ever seen. And like I've said before, I've seen a lot on the internet, and the pictures here are absolutely disgusting and shouldn't be shown to anyone, let alone someone under the age of 18. Now, again, there's nothing purely explicit about these photos in terms of genitalia, but I think most would agree that viewer discretion should be advised for these. I mean, of course, I'm not going to show them, but still. About a month later, we see a classic example of someone who has been caught basically being a pedophile, defending pedophilia, but in this case, it's tacitly, and by that I mean he's doing it implicitly. You'll see later on where he does it more overtly, but here we see, I just mean that I probably care less about age than I should in this society that cares a lot about it, with the victim responding, I understand, and then Cherim saying, I care about maturity alone. I'm upset. I had to ban somebody from the Discord for being 12, and then going on to say, I had to ban someone else for poking into the NSFW stuff and not being 18, and it's just all so stupid. Why are humans so concerned about this? Maturity is all that actually matters for what one can effectively do and handle, which flies in the face of every scientific paper written on addiction in teenagers, as well as the fact that teens can't control their hormones. This is a 30-year-old man who is much more in control of his hormones than a 15-year-old hypersexual furry. And then literally that same way he says, I like being lovey with you so long as I don't cross my own boundaries with his actual boyfriend, but I can control that, so you don't have to worry about that. With the victim saying, I also gave boundaries for what I say to you, TBH, with Cherim saying, I like teasing you and vice versa. I like being close friends. I like the idea of sticking you up my butt non-sexually in an RP. That is one of the most oxymoronic statements I think I've ever read in my life. Even though I've talked about some crazy shit on this channel, that might top the charge for the most oxymoronic statement I've ever seen. He also ends up saying, I'll explain more about this friend who blocked me. I met them quite a number of years ago now. They were 16 when I got talking to them a bunch, and they had a crush on me, and I didn't mind. What world is that okay to, like except that a child has a crush on you as a grown-ass man. I feel like that that's just not remotely okay, and I'm sure you can agree with me on that. Up next, though, we have an example of how this guy is incredibly self-centered, manipulative, and is really just talking about the victim being over 18 for his own security. Here we see, we had an angry mother calling us all heathens for warping her child on the server. I don't know what that means. After that, I want no part in risking this. If I RP'd with you, did something we enjoyed, but our parents found out and hated it, do you know what would happen? I would be condemned, and if they called me a pedophile or some shit, there is very little defense for that on the internet, and many would side with them. 
the previous victims. This isn't even the person I've been, that I've been showing the whole video. Mother rampaging on the server truly made an old part of me uncomfortable and scared. I could still roleplay with some things while you remain 17, but what is the safer option here? A little bit later on, we see him admit to something that he claims he's not super interested in, but does it occasionally, and you'll see how that's not true towards the end of this section, saying, Cherim, it's just between you and them, you didn't have to answer. And Cherim says, I don't even remember, actually. I don't do many young role plays, but yes, I do admit I like those sorts of things. For those of you confused, by young RP, he likely means characters that are under the age of 18, usually that are considered cubs in this case. And again, keep that word in mind because you'll see it used more than once in this video. Also, I must stress, it is incredibly unfortunate how frequent this sort of community trend is, and I'll explain what that means in a second, but what I remember, and what some of you also may remember from the Juke situation, is that after the first video released, he stepped back, let everything cool down, while his audience did nothing but be like, it's okay, it's okay, we understand, You're, you've grown now, you've changed, and then he went right back to streaming. And of course, as soon as I saw him go back to streaming, I released part two. This is a similar thing. Other times, Jeremy, including right now, has been called out quite a few times, and every time this happens, he takes a step back, apologizes, but also never accepts fault, while his community goes, it's okay, Cherim, you're learning and growing, it's no big deal, even though this guy's 30 years old, and then he goes right back to doing his thing. So, if you've made it this far, I encourage you strongly to make his community and the wider furry community and the Roblox community know about his actions. Let them see what he does in private. What he claims he's not super interested in and that he's learned about, this is the kind of stuff he does in private. And he should not be allowed to make videos on a platform made for children, as well as streaming to an audience of how many people he streams to daily, likely making quite a bit of money in the process. About a month later, Cherim decides to say something quite weird, saying, You seem to like it when I push you around in some ways. A lot of your art involves me dominating you in some fashion, and I started really enjoying the idea. And then the victim saying, So that means yes? With Cherim saying, I'll say this, and I mean it neutrally, neither sexually or non-sexually, which I'll let you be the judge of it, whether or not that's true. He said, I actually kind of prefer to be either subby or in the middle most times, but with certain people, I definitely feel a more dominant side around them, and you're definitely one of them. With the victim saying, you feel dominant around me? And Cherim saying, maybe it helps that I've literally tutored you in a lot of ways and that you're younger. Again, is this acceptable behavior? Is this okay to say to anyone who's under the age of 18? After around four months of nothing really notable happening, Cherim decides to engage in quite an odd conversation, where it starts off with, in this case, it wasn't just you, man. Sigh, I deleted all of my messages, fuck it. I have no idea what was said here, but the following words might lend some context. With the victim saying, when I hear cub art, I think the bad kind, because other servers made the words cub art sound like that. Because a few old servers I was on, the people would go, how dare you commission that person he draws cub art, with Cherim responding, well that's my whole point. It's the one fictional bit of content that people attack. People who leave alone fatal vor art or gore art or abuse art because they understand those things to be fictional, but then cub art comes up and people are just fucking assumed to also like that stuff IRL. I fucking that that, whatever that means. It's hypocritical and singles out this one particular fetish to each their own if somebody doesn't like somebody having a fetish. So, just to kind of disprove this idea here, things like gore and fatal vor and stuff like that Usually those are the ends to a pipeline. It doesn't get much worse than that because they are entirely rooted in the idea that it is literally impossible in real life. And there are a lot of people who like gore art who are weirdly attracted to gore as well. They're just limited to that kind of stuff. But with cub art, it's just another line on the pedophilia pipeline. As I explained in my first Twitter Files video, it's a constant searching for a new high that doesn't just end with anthropomorphic animals. You like the proportions, you think they look cute, well, you get bored of that, where are you going to go next? I think many of you could figure out what the answer to that will be. Now, to be perfectly clear, everything I'm about to show you happened after the victim turned 18 years old. However, if it weren't important, I wouldn't be showing it, so why am I doing just that? Well, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is a textbook example of grooming. Cherim had been waiting for this moment for literally two years to end up sexually role-playing in very disgusting manners with the victim. Alongside sharing images of Pokemon literally giving birth, which 
have literally scarred me. I'm going to show an example of a role-playing session they had that is beyond disgusting, and you'll see exactly what I mean by that here in a second. Oh, and by the way, before we get into this, let me make it known that after talking to the victim, they confirmed with me that they didn't even really want to do this, and they felt very uncomfortable throughout the whole ordeal. This is a sort of precursor to what is to come. Here's an example of basically what this roleplay was about, where he said, Hush puppy, I can't be lusting after my cub. You're not into that. And again, cub implies that the character is under the age of 18. Just to kind of jump into this, we see Cherim saying, the larger, older dog stands, I presumably referring to himself, then stretches out in a casual, fatty flare. His soft frame wobbles and squishes as he does, and a low rumble expresses from his throat. He looks down at you, a mere but pudgy thing, with a soft glow in his eyes. You weren't that old at all, and only around the fourth of the size of the big dog. How do you feel, my little kit, which is short for kitten, he hummed out giving you time to acknowledge your size and your role. He stepped up to you and bent his head down, his large, drooly tongue lapping heavily but softly across the top of your head. After a little bit more roleplay, he says, He laid down casually as the cub marveled, laying on his side with belly exposed like many dogs and cats do when wanting to rest with their cubs. He was measured and calm, but his tail still swayed slowly along the ground. When you're done there, come up to mama. I need to finish grooming you. <laughs> All right, I only got your head after all. And then after a break saying, a quick look across the fat gut of your mother revealed two rows of four teats plumped along the sides, exactly as one would expect to find on a canine. Each nip was fairly swollen, jutted out in front of notable swells of milk. He smiled down at you, four paws kneading at the ground in an almost cat-like pace or piece as he winked. Well, beverages are available, my little one. Feel free to take straight from the tap and drink as much as you like. My EV kits love my milk, but it seems that the more they drink, the more I produce. I'm glad to have another cub to help me with this overstock. Uh, what? So then, of course, this naturally progresses into Cherum basically just voring this cub character through the anus. And then eventually... It trails off into this gross, like, good night, my cub, I love you type thing. It's absolutely disgusting. And again, let me stress, I get that the victim in this case was over 18, but Cherum had been grooming the victim in this case to be okay with this kind of roleplay for two straight years. This is textbook grooming. Preparing someone for a relationship, whether it be in the moment or when they're old enough. And in this case, you can't even argue that's benign, because this very quickly went to some disgusting, dominant, adult, submissive cub roleplay that's just disgusting. Again, let me remind you that this guy has a YouTube channel with 28,000 subscribers, a public Discord server that children are allowed in, and a Twitch channel that streams video games. This, literally, over half of his demographic or more are under the age of 18. So, even if there were no explicit pictures of his real genitalia shown, or there was nothing that explicitly broke the law, which it did in cases because there were times that Cherim did send porn to this kid, it doesn't matter. This guy is a platform for children, and he acts up around kids anyways. He's already been called out multiple times for this kind of stuff, but no one talks about it. And this is what will lead me into my next segment, talking about his content and how this kind of plays into the past two videos I've made by complete chance. Looking at his YouTube channel, we see some normal things like Elden Ring, Poke Roll, some random stuff, but there's quite a few times where we see instances of him playing games that are basically revolving around Vor, like this one, this one, and this one. And obviously, like I said, he has a whole playlist of Roblox videos playing those stupid, fucking fetish games that are like copy and pasted in the exact same thing and he's showing those to his audience of mostly children. Roblox is a children's game after all. There was also a point where one of his moderators was actually caught talking to minors and you know he could have done the logical thing and be like fuck you you're out you are no longer part of our community but instead he thought it'd be a great idea to go well, we're just going to let him take a break and he's able to come back in a couple months whenever this is all settled down and he's learned his lesson because this happened a few years ago. It's totally bullshit. And lo and behold, he came back and now he's one of Cherim's largest donators. 
I'm going to show a clip that puts on full display the manipulative tendencies of Cherum, and I'll explain how that is afterwards. So here's the thing. Here's what this topic is over. I've addressed this before. This is not a secret, but it's not something I talk about extensively because also I don't feel it's appropriate to talk about extensively. Some of the stuff I like involves like cub art. And it is purely within fiction that I like this stuff. And I completely understand if that makes anybody feel uncomfortable. And I purely enjoy it in a very picky fashion where I only like it if the, it's very consensual and very, you know, chill. Uh-huh, yeah, right, like, consensual, you know? Like, that's totally okay to just like cub art that is not safe for work, that depicts children. You know, but, you know, maybe he just does this in private. Maybe it's just, like, a very, uh, infrequent thing. Well, uh, look at this webpage that has been archived. Right off the bat, we see that he has a site for role-playing, uh, where literally his banner is a picture of two underage furry characters lying on top of each other in a bathtub with no clothing on. Then we see his description being, Woof, hi, I'm a 10-year-old doggy boy. I'm a Shadox, and we're real special. I'm gonna share lots of art, safe for work and not safe for work art. Maybe some stories, too. Oh yeah, a lot of stuff might be a little weird too. I got general stuff, but also hyper, vor, transformation stuff, all sorts of stuff. So keep an open mind. And then says, this is an RP account ran by an adult, 18 plus only. And pop quiz, remember from the last video the term Shota art? Well, it seems like he's tagged it over 24 times in his various posts, giving you a clue into the type of shit that he posted on here. Now, this page was actually erased by him four days ago, and I'll show you what he did in that case, but let me read some of the stuff that's on this page for you. He basically made one giant spurt of posts on September 15th, 2021. But of course, you know, like I said, he only deleted it four days ago. And he said, Shadoxes are really, really capable creatures. And then later saying, it's fair to let Red play with my rump since I like to play with his rump. And I like my rump being played with. He's kind of thin and small compared to me, which is why both of his arms slipped into my butt so easily. He could probably go even further. Hashtag Shoda. And then, you know, people caught wind of this. So then he said, this is a private account for a fictional interest. The accounts and interests are entirely legal, and I'll explain how they're not in a second, and do not cause any harm to anyone, as no real children are depicted or involved in any way. It has been kept safely in a place where people do not want to see it and cannot stumble onto it, which they did because your name is literally Cherum, and where minors are not allowed. Please stop spreading links to this site in places where this content does not belong. So, Cherum, my question to you personally, if you didn't have a problem with this and you thought it was totally okay, why did you delete it? Were you scared that people found it? Were you upset that people found it? You seem quite proud of the fact that you are partaking in this. So then, in response to the fact you said it's not legal, let me pull up some of your local legal codes to show that that is literally the exact opposite of the truth. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you had any doubts about any of this shit being NSFW, uh, one of his older posts is talking about me with a big thing, wowie, it's not usually that big, but it's fun doing auto EO sucking myself. And this obviously features an underage character. According to Canadian law, illegal pornography is defined as a photographic film, video, or other visual representation, whether or not it was made by electronic or mechanical means. Any written material, visual representation, or audio recording that advocates or counsels sexual activity with a person under the age of 18 years would be an offense under this act. Essentially, this act is a lot broader than the American Act for this very similar thing. It covers things that aren't explicitly real children, and it even covers things that are written material. So that goes to show how wide-reaching this law is. Oh yeah, and by the way, on this site called Ink Bunny, which as far as I know allows cub art on it, in his gallery he literally has a post that says, Kids and their co-op games, and it's basically a little comic of, of two furry characters having sex, presumably under the age of 18. That's about all that I want to cover for this part, and if you or anyone you know has been actively harmed by Cherum over his past 15 years of being an adult, please contact the relevant authorities and Twitter first, and if you want to talk to me, contact me at screechy hashtag 3703. If you want your story heard, or even someone to talk to, I'd be more than happy to listen. And I must stress, this guy loves to manipulate and run away. 
Do not let this happen. Get in contact with people you know and spread the word. Just like the Andrew Files and the Juke Files, I want this video in every Discord server that you're in where you think people would find this video important. I'm not saying you should spam it, of course not. I'm just asking you to make everyone possible aware of this who you believe would potentially know of him or be involved in communities that he is surrounded with. I guarantee you, if he eventually sees this video, he's gonna make a whole video about how I'm casting hate onto him and how Vor is not NSFW and how cub art really isn't that bad and it's a private interest. No dude, you are hiding behind your audience. So how about you come out and face it like a fucking man and realize that what you're doing is inherently both illegal and harming the various kids that watch your YouTube channel. But if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you very much. And like I said, share it, share it, share it as much as you can. I don't want him running away like Juke did. And I would love nothing more than for him to own up to his actions. So thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.